All right, so we're here to talk about the documentary, why we're doing it. Um, I'm Russ, I'm with DEF CON, 15 years, been on staff, um, retired a few years ago, you see how well that worked. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about, before we get Jason on stage, cause he's gonna be much more entertaining than I am, I wanna tell you a little bit about why we went down this path. Have any of you been here since DEF CON 1? All right, I didn't think so. How many of you have been, yeah, the two on the stage, right? They're like, yeah, well, we have. How many of you have been here since at least DEF CON 6? All right, so we've got about five hands. DEF CON 10? 15. All right, so it's getting more and more. The trick here is that, you know, when Jason and Dead Addict and um, DT and I were all younger, we, it was a very, very small community of people that were using computers, right? I mean, we didn't have a lot of friends unless we were dialing them up on a BBS or meeting at a local computer store or whatever else. And so 20 years is considered a generation. And the fact that DEF CON has survived for an entire generation was really, really nagging at us because we didn't want to just let it fly by like every three-day conference that we have every single year, right? So we decided to go ahead and take a chance and do the documentary. And how many of you have seen Jason Scott's other productions? All right. Yeah. Jason does a really, really good job, right? He's got a, one on bulletin board systems. He's got another on GitLamp. And he's working on several others. And he's got some other productions. And he's done a lot of really, really good work over the years. You know, he runs textfiles.com. He's archived all those text files that we all used to accumulate on our computers because we had this drive to collect all the information we possibly could, even if it was, you know, how to mix bleach and ammonia and make something deadly and kill your cat, right? I mean, that, that's kind of what he does. He's keeping that stuff alive for us. And with DEF CON hitting 20, we wanted to go ahead and do that. And it, it was really difficult to come to grips with the idea that after 20 years of telling people that they can't take pictures across the crowd and you can't photograph everyone and hackers are really weird and paranoid and you're going to freak everybody out that we're going to bring in a bunch of film crews and a bunch of photographers and we're going to have everyone doing this, right? So it became <laughs> a certain irony in this, right? So um, we tried to let the, the community know what was going on. Uh, this is very important for us. Um, we have put about $50,000 into this um, of our own cash. So, you know, aside from liability insurance and the money that we spend on the documentary, and we're likely to go over that a little bit because some of the people we wanted to make it here for this weren't able to make it, and we still want them on film. Um, but what you guys need to know is in the spirit of DEF CON, Jeff is still going to give this away at the end of the year. You don't have to buy the documentary. You'll be able to download it. All right. So the core documentary itself is going to be free. Um, we're going to have a ton of photos. He's talking about putting a photo book. We've got a bunch of, you know, off-camera stuff that's happened. We've got all the, the outside footage, all the other little stuff that he wants to put together into a DVD set, right? So it's going to be the DEF CON 20 documentary set. So you can watch the documentary absolutely free. You can download it. You can share it, whatever. Um, but if you want to buy the set that has everything on there and probably has pictures of you and things like that, then we encourage that because it helps offset the money that we put into this. Now, it's not a requirement. We don't care. All right. But if you want all that extra stuff, if you really want to remember this, you can do it that way. Um, we have a lot of stuff here that's going on this year. You can get into the documentary just by being at these various places. You can get there by asking questions. You can be there by participating in contests. We have Lockpick Village. We have Wireless Village. We have Hardware Hacking Village. You've got the Badge Hacking Contest. We've got a ton of parties. Um, how many of you were at the Toxic Barbecue yesterday? All right. So there's a lot of stuff going on that you can just get on film and be part of this and, you know, be... This is historic for us, right? I mean... It's moving on to the next generation. We've been here for 20 years. It's time for somebody else, right? So I'm going to let Jason get up here, kind of explain what he's doing, his teams, uh, show you the trailers. If you have questions for either Jason or I, we'll be here afterwards. We can kind of explain the motivation and the justification why we did this even further. But suffice it to say, we really do love DEF CON. We love the hacking community. We want to document everybody that is part of this and kind of the history of where we came from and how we got here. 
So it's going to be very busy the next three days. Um, if you have any concerns, questions, that kind of stuff, let me know. And I'm going to introduce Jason Scott, who is producing this for us. And so please give him a big round of applause. Okay, so this is the only kind of time, actually, at this entire con, you're going to see me without this vest. So I thought I'd jazz up a little bit. Yeah, work it, work it. Blue steel. Okay, so yes, I make documentaries. Uh, I originally was just collecting text files when I was a kid. Then I moved into realizing that these files and these printouts and everything else were simply the bones and we were losing the sinew and the muscle and why did those bones love and what happened and where it was going. So I did these documentaries like BBS the Documentary. Now the people who haven't seen those films uh, might not know how entirely over-engineered they are. Uh, the BBS Documentary had 205 interviews and took five years. The text adventure documentary, which on those three words alone should sell you, <laughs> it's a text adventure movie in high definition. <laughs> anyway, so that one only had 80 interviews. And so I basically uh, always approach these things for engineering. So when Russ... I'm about to play something. I have some very important footage right here for the... Right there, so I can't work with your thing. Anyway, so I've been, I've been, I've been basically filming all these. That's different... the trailer. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I, I, I mean. Yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. How many speeches do you give where this, the next part comes up and says, "I got to work on this"? Is it something we got to show? Yes. Okay. Is it something? <laughs> you know, I can recover from anything, but you're pushing it. <laughs> I mean, I can, fucking deaf cut. There's literally a guy standing next to me being like, 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 the set, like, like there's one urinal in the bathroom, and you're like, <laughs> how much did you drink? <laughs> All right. Are so, you showing yes. Yeah, this is the, the documentary filmmaker guy is going to show a Go couple back. things and keep talking, Go but you're going to literally stand here. Go ahead. Huh. The reason I wanted to capture DEF CON was because it was a almost Swiss watch perfection of engineering arrangement. <laughs> Did it's we like get that every on every single film? event occurs. Um, so before I do anything else, um, I just want quickly, my members and my team, just to hop up here very quickly. Um, so we're basically wearing these very bright orange vests. We were trying to come up with a way to have it that people sort of had the option to kind of avoid us. The best thing that we could come up with was everybody's wearing a really bright orange vest that says documentary on it. So if you see one of these assholes, just run like crazy. So I... And, and, and a, uh, a, a quick shout out to Missing Brothers uh, team Breaking Bald, uh, Rick and Steve, who are following Jeff right now, because Jeff is like the fucking unicorn. So if you catch him, you get three wishes. That's actually in the program. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so thanks, guys. Just, so they'll be around, and they're going to film me right now. All right. So let me just show you the uh, original trailer that I'm, that's already up on YouTube, and I'll make it, I'll make it public right now. Defcon documentary. Is it time for the in-flight movie? Yeah, yeah. Here's your movie. No, thanks. Oh, I've seen it. It was wild, yeah. It was unlike anything I had ever been to before. It's like a giant party that doesn't want to end. No 
kidding. That's what we do. We come together and we do the hell out of it. So just that we give up the footage as, as quickly as possible. Um, you know, one of the things they wanted was they were like, so are you going to jazz this thing up? So I just wanted to very quickly show you we have not, I, I, I did this last night. This is from footage we have actually shot here already. Number one, follow the three, two, one rule daily. And please bear in mind these are minimums. At a minimum, three hours of sleep, two meals, one shower. Because it's an opportunity really for him to experience something different, a different type of culture. And uh, I was here last year and I bought him a hoodie. He's and totally I picking his pocket. It's time to bring him out and bring the wife out and get them to see what it's like, what the whole hacker culture is about. And despite the fact that we've grown bigger, that's still what this event is. It's just a lot of people who like each other, want to show off what they have, want to share what they have, and want to be safe. Fire in the hole!
So that's actually true. Um, again, so like I said, we've really over-engineered this thing. Um, I've got three separate teams currently filming pretty much simultaneously. I'm doing interviews, sit-down interviews. Um, we, of course, are not omniscient. So if there's people out there who have, what I really want, the one thing I'm really worried about us not having is if one of you guys have made a hotel room that would make the ghost in the shell shit its pants, I would love to see that. We're just otherwise never going to know. So if anybody out there has like a hotel room or past a hotel room where you felt like there should have been a smoke machine, then let us know because uh, we'd love to get that. We've also been kind of handing out portable cameras to a number of key people to catch things, uh, some of which I'm sure will primarily be scrotums. But once we edit out the scrotums, uh, the real plan is to kind of keep the most of the non-scrotum stuff going on. Um, as, as Russ... There's a scrotum reel. There's always a scrotum reel. Blooper reel, scrotum reel. Make sure you click on the right one. Um, and I'm just going to play one more. This is the third of the three footages. Um, I put this out a little while ago because they want, you know, I mean, when, when you put a lot of trust in somebody, even if the guy has a pedigree, you want to prove that you're actually able to produce something that has some meaning. So I visited Joe Grand, uh, the previous badge maker, um, at his house and just quickly put together some stuff about the badge and this is a you know this is basically an initial shot at it I will be creating longer version short films about specific things we have for instance well over an hour or something of the DEFCON shoot some really wonderful footage so um, that's going to be its own bonus feature but this is uh, something with Joe DEFCON's always had really cool badges you know of course well DEFCON 1 was a piece of paper but you know they've tried to do unique badge designs from the beginning. Jeff Moss had said, Joe, you should really do a hardware hacking class for Black Hat, because they were getting into training and everything. And I designed a circuit board in the shape of my logo, a little G for my Grand Idea Studio logo. And I would have the students uh, learn how to solder on that and desolder and, and essentially, uh, eventually hack the circuit board to defeat a security mechanism that I'd put in there. And Jeff Moss caught wind of that and said, oh, those are really cool. We should do something like that for DEF CON. And that's how it started. It was just, he had seen the badge I put together and said, we should do something like that. I got on the phone a few times with, with Jeff and Ping to, uh, to just come up with some general concepts. You know, let's try to keep it around $5 a badge. We don't want to spend too much money on it because we don't know if people are going to like it. Uh, so, you know, try to do something pretty basic. Um, and by the way, we need 6,500 of them. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, so the key here is, um, you know, I'm trying to do real respect to this event. Um, for the last two months, I have basically been traveling. I've been to uh, eight cities, and I've interviewed 45 people, primarily organizers and goons, because here they're just totally not going to be able to spend time with me. Um, we've really tried to get as many people from the past as possible. There's still some on my list. Um, and we're going to basically end up with probably something like 200 hours of footage by the end of this weekend. And then I've got to turn that into a movie. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not worried about getting some cool footage. We've already got some pretty cool footage. And so, and the con just started, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I will address the one thing, um, uh, uh, you know, I really, really appreciate the trust they're putting in me because this is a 180 on the policy of DEF CON. I mean, Russ touched on it, but it is a 180, right, of having a crew. And not just a crew, a sanctioned all-access goon badge crew that's going to walk through everything. And I just want to make it clear, Jeff and Russ get final cut approval, right? I mean, maybe that might cause a little bit of editorial... Uh, uh, restriction, but I'm here for the con. I'm here to do the con right. I don't want anybody putting their head in their hands after seeing this film. I want them to make five billion MP4s and send them to other people and replace the startup sound with this thing and just do that, you know? Force their kids. Well, a lot of people use the BBS documentary as both an indoctrination and um, nostalgia tool. So they say, you know, I've actually had people tell me that the person they were married to said, oh, now I get it. <laughs> and so, you know, if you really, you know, like, what's your reaction? Do you want happiness? I want the person who's next to you that you made watch this go, oh, now I get it. Yeah, you really got to get there on Tuesday, don't you? 
Now, work is probably not going to go, oh, now we get it. They're going to go, oh, now we get it. <laughs> anyway, so, so that's really kind of where I'm going about it. So we're basically shooting uh, constantly. Uh, that's the reason you're seeing me on the Segway now. Now you know why you're seeing me on the Segway to get around to get these shots. Um, if somebody has a story they really want us to know, please walk up to one of the people who's wearing the vest. Let us know about a story that's going on. We're aiming for events. We're aiming for things that are going on. And, you know, we're just trying to capture it. We're not going to get everything. DEF CON is just too fucking big. I mean, it is a huge event. Having now spent time on the back end watching them put things together, A, the miracle it ever happens at all, but B, the fact that everyone is driven to make this happen and put everything in. I mean, the fact that there's a rogue cell in this building with badges that are phones that can call other badges. You don't get that shit at CES or down, down the block. You know, I mean, that's pretty amazing. So, so, yeah, I mean, my hope is, you know, I mean, some people will see things like the guy with his kid and giggle. Other people will be touched. But everyone will go, yeah, I see. Okay, that makes sense why he brought the kid here. I mean, you know, bright lights. Um, you, you know, I like to leave the audience with their own stuff. And so I don't use a narrator. And I don't use, uh, you know, I don't use the, the standard Discovery Channel approach of you can actually watch it while you're ironing and then turn away and have a fire and come back and still get the plot. <sighs> I, had, I had a great chat with Joe Grand just before he uh, took up Prototype This. And what I told him was, you realize they don't, you're not going to be filmed being an engineer. You're going to play the part of an engineer. See, nobody's playing a part here. You are what you are. Anyway, so if you're not comfortable with what we're doing here, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. I can't do much for you. We got a film. Uh, we're trying to make it look for the bright colored asshole. Uh, feel free to walk up to the bright colored asshole and go, okay, we've already deleted a couple interviews from people sobering up. <laughs> we will respect that, okay? We're not gonna be like, no, no. He was, he was a little nervous, that guy. He was like, did I? No, mm, no. But anyway. So we're, we're, we want it to be happiness, not regret. All right, so again, everyone filming like this, and he's right. The other thing I, I did want to say with that was that I am filming three other documentaries. Uh, the 6502 chip, uh, the medium of tape, and the place of arcades. And each one of those has dozens of them. And I put that thing totally on hold for the past four months to work on this. Uh, and my, my Kickstarter backers, uh, I was worried about them. And so I said, who wants to be on the crew? So most of my crew are my Kickstarter backers. <laughs> so that, you know, that's, so we're gonna fly yet. Uh, oh, you wanna watch one of my movies? That's cool. Would you like to be worked to death making one you didn't pay for? <laughs> oh, well. Um, all right, well, anyway, so thanks for all that. Um, I will answer questions and I will take suggestions. We spent a lot of time trying to capture what we think is the magic of DEF CON, but the real magic of DEF CON is we have no fucking idea what DEF CON is. So let's try to find out. <laughs>